Here's Jacob DeGrom the last five years. His 2018-2019 outstanding, obviously, both Cy Young seasons. But he hasn't had a full season in three years. 2020, obviously not his fault. But 2021, he's having one of the best seasons in modern history, the Savage 1.08 ERA. But he kept breaking down, eventually stopped at 92 innings. Last year, missed the whole first half through 64 innings. His body hasn't had to face the strain of a full season since he was 31 years old. More to the point of this troubling things here. 2021, he didn't have an injury. He had a series of injuries and strains. His lat, his shoulder, his forearm, and everything's connected. And DeGrom had issues up and down his body. He got shut down in early 2021. Didn't pitch again until August of 2022. At the start of last year, he had shoulder blade issues. In that time now, mind you, he didn't have surgery and recovery. But he missed a full calendar year. Now, DeGrom, when he came back, he had a great start. But he also had an ERA of six over his last four starts in September. So his ERA for the season, 65 innings of 3.08. So he's a true thoroughbred sprinter. Over the last two years, his strikeout rate, already quite high, has gone up. His walk rate, already quite low, has gone down. DeGrom's strikeout percentage of 44% is higher than the highest of relief pitchers, higher than Edwin Diaz and Josh Hader. The next best starter, is Spencer Strider of the Braves, and he's just below 38%. And DeGrom's walk rate among those with 100 innings the last two years is also number one in baseball, number one in strikeout rate, number one in walk rate. That's unbelievable. So everything's great, right? But if you're backing up the truck filled with money, you have to consider everything. Think about it. DeGrom is going to be 35. He hasn't pitched a full season in three years. He just opted out of a contract that could have paid him $63 million over the next two years. You don't opt out to make less. He's going to want more. And there is a real risk to allocating, say, $40 million a year for a pitcher who's averaging around 75 innings a year, at least for the last two seasons. Unless you're in the top five in spending, your team payroll is below $200 million. So do the math. Even at $200 million, a $40 million a year pitcher is 20% of your payroll. That's a fifth of your roster spending. That can be done. That can work out. But if a fifth of your payroll is tied up for a starter, and he's pitching under 100 innings, you're going to have a real problem. It's one thing to have dead money as well for a player that you already have on your payroll, somebody that's been playing for you for years. It's quite another to make the choice to sign that guy off the free agent market knowing that risk. That's why the Jacob deGrom market is one of the most fascinating, I think, in five decades of free agency. Mark Feinstein is here. Dan Plesek is here. I know you're feeling it already. You're feeling it. I, we've spoken about this before, and we didn't, I didn't even prompt you on things, and you're, there's a reticence there, given the amount of money he commands. Yes, and there's no doubt in my mind, when healthy, the pockets of his healthy pitching, he's the best pitcher in baseball, yep. and the numbers add that up. But if you look at the last three years, he's averaged 75 innings per season. So if you equate that, that's like, say, six innings, he's going to give you between 12 and 13 quality starts of six innings. That's about what you're about to expect. And Brian, I don't know, unless you're a really good team, that you're going to say, okay, we have a lot of depth in our rotation, and we can conserve him and save him. I don't know where you're going to get the amount of innings that justify somewhere between 35 and, say, $45 million per year salary. Right. That's the thing is that it's not like, oh, the guy, you know, would you take a chance on the guy? Obviously, there's a lot to love. Again, his strikeout rate went up. His walk rate went down. He's number one in both categories, but at $40 million a year. What do you think, Mark? Well, I think the Mets are in an interesting position where they know more about his physical status than any other team out there. Mm -hmm. So if the Mets are willing to pay him $40 million a year, you have to think that they've seen the medicals, they know firsthand what his arm looks like, what his, what his condition is, and they feel confident that he's passed these injuries and gonna be able to go. It's a lot of money though. However, if there's one owner who can handle a lot of money, it's Steve Cohen. Well, well I mean, 
every owner can handle that sort of money. It's a matter of the budget that you're playing with. Now, Steve Cohen has gotten to, I think, close to $300 million, so they're number one in payroll. It's got to be one of these top five, right? Like, who else? You can't have, like, a $140 million payroll and 40 is going to one guy, Generally right? speaking, when you have these guys up in the $35, $40 million range or $30 to $40 million range, it's usually the top five, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you don't see the Brewers go out and sign right. a guy for $40 million. Zach Greinke actually was, when he was with the Diamondbacks, I think ate up like the largest percentage of payroll, right, and it was unhealthy. They had to ship him 100%. out. It didn't make and sense. So I think generally when you look at the Aaron Judges, the Jacob DeGroms, guys like that, you're always looking at that top five or six teams because those are the teams mm -hmm. that can afford to pay it and not have it envelop their entire payroll. So if it's Mets and Dodgers, does it make sense? Because, again, the Dodgers do love the type of guy, all right, we only got 145 innings out of the guy, but it was this 1.7 ERA, and we'll yeah, deal with yeah. it. Yeah, you know, in your essay, I guess what struck me is I, for some reason, I, I, I was thinking that DeGrom was in that, like, age 31, 32 season. You're talking age 35. Right, now, right. very few pitchers, Justin Verlander has been an outlier, a guy that in his late 30s, mm. almost 40, pitched over 170 innings this year, coming off a of time. Tommy John surgery. So, with that said, I, I just, Brian, I, I know that he's been linked to the Rangers, but unless the Rangers have some incredibly found pitching depth that we don't know about, I'm not sure where he fits in the plans with the Rangers. I'm with you. To me, it has to be a team like the Mets. It has to be a team like the mm -hmm. Dodgers that have some depth, that have some quality, that can say, hey, listen, we know that there's going to be pockets of dominance, and we have enough depth that we can avoid the long haul right. and say, okay, we want him really good late September into the month of October. You had mentioned the Rangers earlier, and so I, I looked them at their 13th in payroll. They were at $131 million. That was their payroll last year. So if Texas is saying, yeah, we're at one 131. We're going to go to 200, and we choose to send most of that to Jacob DeGrom. I guess they could do that. They could do that, but a team that is really starved looking for starting pitching. Martin Perez had a monster year last year. Yep. He took the qualifying offer, which yep. probably is a smart move, but they need somehow some way to acquire some more pitching, more than just Jacob DeGrom. They need some depth in that rotation. You almost feel like they'd be better off getting two of the next level starters versus getting That's DeGrom. You add Carlos right. Rodon and Chris Bassett. Mm -hmm. or Jamison Tyon, put those two guys in your rotation, you're going to get a lot more innings, and for a team that really needs those innings, that might be a better way to go. What are you hearing, though? Is there a, like, a, 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 I don't want to say a second-tier team, but a second-tier spending team? Is there a mystery team that's out there? I don't know. Like, I'm just, the Phillies, not like some low spender. Phillies, Astros are top ten. Is there another top ten-ish team that we're not thinking of that could be interested in this? I think the one team I keep coming back to for DeGrom and pretty much every other free agent out there is the Giants because we know that they're going to spend money this offseason. Mm -hmm. If they don't get Aaron Judge, the question is, where do they spend that money? Right. And it could go in any number of directions, but you know the Phillies are certainly a team to watch. The Rangers, I think, despite what we just discussed, right. are certainly a team to watch as well. Dan, I have a can I get baseball with you? Right? Yes. Again, you you pitched for nearly two decades in the major leagues, but just from my uh, observation, a lot of the guys that I had on my list that I was pointing to there, they're pitchers, not throwers. Like there was, I think there's a reason why yes. Adam Wainwright, Zach Greinke, especially early in the year, Verlander, guys, Ver, Verlander the whole year, 175, and Max Scherzer, they know how to pitch. Degrom overwhelms you. And the fact that he only operates at 105% is something like, uh, it's not a plus. It's, yeah, his stuff overwhelms you, but that thoroughbred, everything's got to be perfect or it's not happening. And if I'm spending $40 million, I'd be concerned about that. I'm with you on that. And that's why when we talked a couple of weeks ago, I thought of all the those guys that were on your board, Verlander is probably the safest bet because, one, he's a guy that posts up. He came all the way back from Tommy John surgery, went on the IL, had some leg issues. And when he came back in, during the postseason, it wasn't, hey, let's build him an extra day. It was every five days, let's run go. that thoroughbred out there. To me, he's the safest bet that you're going to get quality and quantity as far as innings and good pitching you want you want a thoroughbred you want a little bit of plow horse there though too yeah, oh <laughs> sure you do you got to be able to work you, you know do. yeah i think the one thing we're, we're forgetting pitchers like Degrom of his level don't get to free agency that often teams have more money than they've ever had they're extending their guys mm -hmm. it's very rare so when a guy gets to free agency of this level this is a, a once in every few years or once in every decade opportunity mm -hmm. for teams. We saw it with Garrett Cole a couple of years ago when the Yankees signed up. Is it different, though, that he's at 35? It's one thing if you get it, Cole and he's like 30, that's different, It is, right? but it's also not a nine-year commitment that the Yankees yep. had to make to Garrett Cole. Right. When you look at DeGrom coming off his injury last year, 
his first seven starts, he had a one and a half ERA. Yeah, was stellar. Dominant. Yeah. The yeah. last four starts were not very good. Six ERA. Right. OPS was like 400 points higher against him. But you look at these StatCast numbers and where he ranked uh, in the league, even including those bad starts. Yeah. You're looking at a guy, best strikeout percentage in the league, one of the best walk percentages in the league, chase rate, best velocity, best spin. Yeah. Everything about him said, this is the guy. And if you have an opportunity and you're a team that can't afford it, it almost feels like this is an opportunity you have to try to seize because they don't come along that often. But also the, the marketplace has gotten a little uh, smarter, but just uh, more um, um, fiscally astute in that you can pile up money short term. Right now, we've gotten we've gotten more used to 35 million, 40 million short term deals. You're not going nine. You're going like the Scherzer deal for I think it's about 42 million a year. We're asking you, the thinking fan, do a little crowdsourcing. Again, Ben Clemens of Fangraphs will be with us later. And we'll ask him all right, so his prediction on where it was and where the Fangraphs readers had it. We'll have both. But we'll ask you at MLB now. Let us know what you think. Jacob deGrom's contract will be. Give us the years. Give us the total. If you want, I like when they divide and give me the AAV. Dan. OK, I don't want to have to divide on it. He doesn't like to do math. <laughs> No, look, yeah, I, you, yes. you, no, you show me. I'll do the math at home, but you, you show me. Don't make me do the math live on the air. You, I'm just, you, you, you can do whatever you want, but if you want to get it on air, <laughs> do the AAV for me. Or at least keep them nice big round yes. numbers yeah. that are easy to divide, right? Yeah, that's right. Like the 10 for 300. Okay, I can do okay, that. Okay, I can right. do that. All right, <laughs> let us know what you think at MLB Now.